Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this is lesson eight, uh, factoring special polynomials, um, the first part. The second part will be the last lecture in this unit. Um, so let's get down to it. There's gonna be two different um, kind of cases that we're gonna work on today. The third one will be in the next uh, lecture. The first one is called um, a perfect square trinomial. So I am going to work backwards from uh, what we're going to be doing to show you how this works. Um, you can imagine if you have any binomial, a plus b, uh, just imagine that those are numbers, and the whole thing is squared. Um, we are going to learn how to take a trinomial and convert it into this form very, very easily. But to do that, I'm gonna work backwards first. So this is like saying a plus b multiplied by a plus b, and then we would be able to FOIL that. We would be able to do um, first, outside, inside, last. Uh, so let's do that. We would have a squared plus a b for the outsides plus insides, we would have b a, so again that's a b, and then we would have b squared. These we know it can combine because they're like terms. So we actually have a squared plus two a b plus b squared. And we're very familiar with this one being just like a, that's, that's the first terms, like a squared. And we're very familiar with this one being the last terms, uh, like b squared. But this, as you can see in the notes, um, and I'll also write it down here, double the product of the two terms that are in the binomial. So it is double the product of a and b. So that means if we have something that's in this form, uh, where the middle term is double the product of a plus b, that means we can write it like this. Uh, we're going to use that knowledge, as it says in your notes there, to work backwards when factoring trinomials. So let's give it a go. Let's do this in this example. Um, it wants us to factor 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Now when we look at this, we can tell that the first term is a perfect square, right? 2x times 2x would get you um, 4x squared, and we can see that this part is a perfect square because 3 times 3 would get you 9. We can find out if this is a perfect square trinomial by doubling the product of these of 2x and 3, the um, what would multiply by itself to get these two terms all multiplied by 2. If that does equal 12x, that means that this is a perfect uh, square trinomial. So 2x times 3 is 6, times 2 is 12, that is 12x. So that means that this is a perfect square trinomial. So we can take these two terms and write them in our brackets, just like we would have up here in our a plus b squared. It's going to be, all the brackets are gonna square everything in it. So we're gonna have 2x plus 3 squared. And we can always check that. We can always check that to see if we're correct, to see if it gets us our original um, problem. So let's do that. This would be 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. We would have 2x times 2x is 4x squared, so that's good so far. 2x times 3 is 6x. 3 times 2x is plus 6x. And then 3 times 3 is 9. That 9 and the 4x squared are exactly what we'd expect um, because we took those the square roots of those values. We're then going to combine like terms. 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. And they do match. So that means we have done the right thing. Um, this is the answer that we would want to put our box around. Let's check to see if the next one down here is a perfect square um, trinomial. We have 16 minus 56x 
plus 49x squared. So although it is flipped around, these are still, we can still square root 16 and get four. Uh, and this one would be seven X. So if this term is double the product of four times seven X, that means that it is a perfect square trinomial. Let's try this out. Uh, four times four would get us 16. Seven X times seven X would get us 49 X squared. We're then going to double it. Let's see, 28 X times two definitely gets us 56 X. That means that this is a perfect square trinomial. We can use the two um, squares that we used, uh, that we found out before, in our brackets. So we would have four. Now, we need this to be a negative value. So that means that we would have negative seven X. And to make this positive, our other one would also need to be negative seven X because a negative times a negative equals a positive. So it's, you need to pay attention to which signs, but uh, we could write this as four minus seven X squared. And that is what we will be wanting to write in our box as the correct answer. Um, let's go to the second type, which is a little bit trickier, but not too bad. Let's see, I'm gonna use blue. So um, this time we are factoring trinomials with two variables. So instead of there only being x, only being y, only being a, you're gonna have x and y, or a and b, c and d in all of these. So let's give them a go. Uh, the first one it wants us to factor is x squared plus five xy plus six y squared. Um, what we're going to do is because we know that we need to get the x squared on the first term and we need to know we need to get the y squared on the second term we can start writing our brackets like this I'm gonna draw them a little bit bigger because we need to fit more in them there is x here and an x here and there's gonna be a y to make the last term y squared but we need to find out what terms would multiply would uh, multiply together to get six and then add together to get five if you remember when it's just like factoring um, when this number is one so before we got into com our complex problems uh, we need to find out things that multiply to six and add to five to me that would be three and two and then we're going to put addition signs in between let's check to see if this um, foiled gets us our trinomial. So x times x is x squared. x times 3y is plus 3xy. 2y times x is plus 2xy. And then 2y times 3y is plus 6y squared. We can combine like terms. x squared plus 5xy plus 6y squared is the exact same as what we got before. That means that this is correct. And that's the answer that we would want to put um, in the boxes. Let's do another problem, another simple one, where a is one. So let's do c squared minus 5cd minus 14d squared. Again, greatest common factor is one, and I see that I can make c squared and d squared by putting them on the ends of my two binomials. So I'd have c squared to make d, d. Now I'm looking for two things that multiply together to get minus 14 and add together to get minus five. Um, one and 14 doesn't work. The next one that we can do would be two and seven. Um, so I would have to have minus seven d and plus two d. Multiply those together, you get negative 14. You add them together, you get negative five. Um, and that would be our answer. Okay, easy as that when we don't have a number in front. Um, when we do, uh, like we do right here, uh, in this problem, we've got two a squared minus seven a b plus three b squared. We can use both logical reasoning and decomposition just like we would before to figure this out. The only difference is that we're writing a b and the ends 
again to make the b squared over here and to add the b into the middle. So we know to make a 2a squared, we are going to have to have a times a. And then the only combination to make the 2 is 2 and 1. So I'm not going to put a 1 there. But 2a times a gets us 2a squared. We also know that we need to have b on the back and b on the back. Um, and to make b squared, we know that we're going to have to, or the 3, we're going to have to have some combination of 1 and 3. But what combination to make a minus 7a? We're not 100% sure. Um, let's start uh, trying to figure it out. Um, so because this is negative, I know I'm going to have to have negative numbers here. So to make positive 3, I could have negative 1 and negative 3, or I could have negative 3 and negative 1. I'm going to cross multiply. So multiply all these by 1. That doesn't do anything to them. Still minus 1, pardon me, and still minus 3. But we multiply these by 2 get minus 6 and minus 2. So we're going to look at the red numbers to find out which combination gets us uh, minus 7a. Uh, minus 7. So, so we got minus 1 and minus 6. That would be the pair. So that means we're going to have a negative 1 and a negative 3 here. 2a minus 1b. So I don't actually have to have the 1. Uh, multiplied by a minus 3b. Um, Let's check. Let's foil it to check. 2a times a squared is 2a squared. 2a times negative 3b is negative 6b, ab, sorry. Negative b times a is negative ab. Negative b times negative 3b is positive 3b squared. We're going to combine like terms as we always do. 2a squared minus 7ab plus 3b squared. We did it. That is correct. That check is correct, which means that this is the correct answer. Excellent. Let's see if I can adjust some lighting. I cannot. We can do the same problem by decomposition. So let's do the same problem by decomposition. We have 2a squared minus 7ab plus 3b squared. We are going to take the two outside numbers, 2 and 3, and multiply them together. So we need two numbers where their product equals 6 and their sum is equal to negative 7. Um, if we start thinking about that, I think um, negative 1 and negative 6 would work. Um, so that means that I can break this part down into negative 1 and negative 6. Uh, so I'd have 2a squared minus uh, ab minus 6ab plus 3b squared. I can then split it down the middle and factor out a portion of each. So let's factor out a 2a from the first part. So I'd have, no, just an a. Can't factor out the 2 because the 2 is not in the second term. So we just factor out a, which would leave us with 2a minus b. And in the second part, we can factor out a negative 3 and a b from both of those. So we'd have negative 3b, which would leave me with 2a minus b here. So that means that these are two are the same. So we can factor the brackets out the back and be left with this in the first term and one of these in the second. We would have a minus 3b times 2a minus b. And that would be our answer. If we check back, is that the same as we got before? It is just flipped around in a different order. So that is all good. Doesn't matter what method you use. Uh, there is now a try it on your own. So go ahead and try that one. And if all goes well, uh, come back and watch the rest of the video. Um, and we'll go over it together. All right, let's do this thing. Uh, we have 10 c squared minus c d minus 2 d squared. Um, this is not a problem where a is 1. a is something different. It is 10. 
So we are going to um, use decomposition to break this one down. So I'm gonna go 10 times minus two. So I need a product of minus 20 and a sum of minus one. Uh, right away, I'm thinking four and five are really close together. That multiplied to minus 20. So if I had minus five and plus four, that would work out. So if I break this middle part down, I could go 10c squared minus uh, 5cd plus 1cd, so I'm not going to write the 1, minus 2d squared. I'm going to break down or uh, factor out a number from each uh, half. So in the first half, I'm going to factor out a 5c. 5c, I would have 2c left over here, and I would have a negative d left over here. That's it. In this one, I'm going to factor out, let's see. Did I do this correctly? Hmm. We'll find out. I'm going to factor out a d from this. So let's see. We'll have d. And we'll have c minus 2d. I feel like something is incorrect. Let's see if I can. Oh, you know what it was? It's because I didn't put the 4 here. I need a 4. We all make mistakes. OK, so uh, this ha first part is right, still OK. But this second part is not. So I'm going to do it on this side over here. I'm going to factor out of this a 2d. Yes, that's what I'm going to factor out. So I'm going to have plus 2d. And what I'm going to be left with is 2c minus d. Yes. And then because those two are the same, I can factor that out and be left with these two in the first bracket and this in the second. So 5c plus 2d and then 2c minus d. And that is what we should get for our answer. Uh, if you flip the order around, that's definitely not a problem. Uh, but as you can see, it's very important. You make one little mistake by missing writing that down, and the whole thing is funky. So if you have any questions, uh, put in the comments, send me an email. Um, hopefully see you for the last lesson soon. Bye.